I'm Russ Kinsler. I'm the Missouri River System Biologist based out of Riverdale. And today we're at uh, Partial Bay on Lake Skakawea and we're spawning walleyes. Well, we're spawning walleyes so that we can stock all the lakes in North Dakota that, that have walleyes in them. The vast majority, in fact, almost all of them are, are don't reproduce naturally. The walleye spawn is triggered partially by day length, photo period, and then by water temperature. With the ice coming off, sometimes when it comes off early, you think, oh, we need to get out there, and the, the photo period just isn't right. So that's where it, it always ends up being the end of April, the beginning of May. And usually when the water temp gets in the mid 40s to around 50 degrees is when the spawn is really getting going and going good. If we get warmer than that, then we start seeing some egg quality issues uh, with the eggs that we bring into the hatchery. And the hatchery is a very interesting uh, situation there. So when we spawn in North Dakota, the game and fish goes out and traps the fish and we spawn with the hatchery. Then the eggs go to the Garrison Dam National Fish Hatchery where they raise them up, uh, hatch them, raise them up, to a stockable size and then, then we come back in and get the fish from the hatchery and stock them back out. Uh, that's a very unique situation with that partnership with the Fish and Wildlife Service there and it, it doesn't happen you know, almost anywhere else in the country. We put nets out in the lake uh, to capture the fish alive. Um, so we did that this past weekend. We're back here today checking the nets, taking the fish out and sorting the fish to see if they're ready to spawn or not. And then the ones that are ready are brought into the, the setup we have behind us and are spawned and then released. Um, the fish that aren't ready we're hold until they for a few days to see if they'll come around and, and we can spawn them in a few days. So the egg goal is around 50 million eggs and that's to make 9 million fingerlings to stock out into roughly 160 lakes uh, throughout North Dakota. So that I mean that varies from year to year depending sometimes on winter kill or you know whether we have a good take of previous year's uh, stocking. So the number of lakes stocked varies from year to year and then that with that goes the number of eggs and the number of fish requested. So this year we are not stocking any back into Lake Skakawea. Um, last year stocking, once we stocked and went back in in the fall to see how they did, we had the second highest catch rate of those stock fish that we've seen since we've been test netting. So this year we are not stocking uh, because we think we have plenty of fish out there. So we're actually higher this spring than we've been the last couple years. So that's a good thing. Um, but with the lack of snow in the mountains, uh, our the lake level is going to come up a little bit this early summer, but then it's going to slowly go down. And yeah, with that lack of snow, we're going to definitely be lower at this time next year than we are now. Um, yeah, the lake is dropping and that's not always a bad thing. When the lake drops, you get vegetation that grows up on the shoreline. And when we flood that again in subsequent, subsequent years, that productivity spurs on, you know, from the smallest bugs up and it works up the food chain to the biggest walleye. So having the lake go down and vegetation grow up is not a bad thing. So hopefully it's just a one year with the lack of snow in the mountains and, and then we can come up again in the future. Our smelt right now are, are looking pretty good. Um, we have what we think are decent numbers of smelt out in the lake. The one thing we've noticed throughout the years is, and it goes back to that productivity, as the reservoir is aging, it's becoming less productive and our smelt are smaller at an age than they used to be. And so it, it takes more smelt to feed a fish now than it used to feed, you know, used to be so. Our smelt numbers are good, but they're just a little bit smaller. Our fish are looking pretty good. We did notice a drop in their weights last year, um, what's called a relative weight. And that's why that played into why we're not stocking this year. We're just being a little bit conservative and don't, don't want to see those weights drop too much to where we're now worried about a forage issue and, and having too many mouths and not enough food out there. So last year was a really good year and I would expect fishing is going to be really good again this year. The one thing they're going to encounter is that we do have several small, uh, several year classes of small fish coming into the, into the fishery. So they're going to be dealing with that and catching a lot of them smaller 10 to 14 inch size fish and I think they're gonna think that, oh, well, we caught all the big ones last year, and they didn't. There are still plenty of big fish out there. It's just that there's a lot of young fish coming up. So we do a krill survey on the lake every three years, and this is the year, the next year in, in line to do it. So this year we will have krill clerks out there interviewing anglers, um, basically asking them about their, their catch and what they've caught and, and measuring some of their fish so we can get an idea of basically how many fish anglers are catching, how many they're keeping, which is really important. So 
we know what kind of exploita exploitation we're having on the, on the fishery. And then also, you know, what size of fish they're, they're catching and keeping. So there'll be creel clerks out at different ramps throughout the year. And we just like to ask our anglers to be patient with them and, and, and help them out by answering some questions.